Alrighty, hello everyone, welcome out of Spec Guide. I'm Max here filming with my friend Ryan and his Model 3. Hello. Welcome. So Ryan, your Tesla Model 3 is an interesting car, not just because it's one of the cheapest new electric cars you can buy, but because in my view, it kind of uh, synthesizes a lot of Tesla's advantages for customers. And we're not making this video as like, a, oh, you need to buy a Tesla. The only electric car you should buy should be a Tesla. Like, I will just say candidly, I don't have a Tesla deliberately. I have a Polestar 2. I'm all in support of a diverse, competitive car market. Nonetheless, Tesla has some real advantages, real life, practical advantages today we should talk about. So basically, not full self-driving. We're not getting into promised future features. We just want to talk about what buyers should be looking for now. Features that I know, like Ryan, you, have, I'm sure, come to depend on and enjoy that are kind of crazy in a car for this price. Absolutely, I 100% agree. There's a ton of information, a lot of noise out there, both good and bad about what, what Teslas can and can't do and what the competition can and can't do. I think it's a really important for us to take a moment and discuss, see what Tesla actually does have an advantage in. Yep, we're gonna talk pragmatically about where they're ahead and how far we think ahead they are because this matters for you when you're cross shopping cars. So let's get into it. Okay, so Ryan, the first thing I think with Tesla that we should bring up, the like buyer might experience is, well, let's just frankly say it, the buying experience. Buying a Tesla is uh, an interesting experience. Can you describe it? Absolutely. It's unlike buying a lot of other vehicles. There's no dealership that you go to. You don't haggle. There's not even a lot of options that you have to spec. You just go onto the website, basically pick the color that you like, pick the interior you like, and select whether you, whether or not you want the enhanced autopilot, the other options like that. That's it. Uh, it's all online. It's all done through the app. I, I texted some people through the app and that was basically all the communication I had to do up until the, the day that I took delivery of the vehicle. So you're telling me there was no like, let me check with my manager, okay, we can get you down on the is interest rate over 144 months, none of that? None of that. Interest rate was set, the price was set, uh, it, it was very, very easy, made it really simple and straightforward for me. Yes, so the argument for dealers has been, okay, well, you can haggle on the price, you, you have a middleman, it stops automakers from consolidating too much power. I get those arguments, but frankly, Ryan, I agree with you. The buying experience of Tesla makes it seem so easy. I bought my Polestar, also the direct-to-consumer, and it was so nice. The other week, I went in with my girlfriend, uh, Gosha, to go to a Hyundai dealer where we looked at a Kona EV, terrible. I mean, maybe just that particular dealer, we're not even gonna say their name, wasn't particularly nice, but so many car dealers are like that. Um, they just really, it's an anti-consumer, in my view, business model that requires you to be like a master negotiator to bargain for the price of your car to not get screwed over. I don't love that. I love how simple Tesla makes it. And other manufacturers here, I think, are catching up, but I don't know if none are quite where Tesla is. So Polestar, I bought my Polestar. It was um, pretty pretty easy. They do direct to consumer. However, Polestar spaces are co-owned by Volvo dealers because Polestar and Volvo have sort of corporate, uh, you know, relationships. They're both owned by Geely, the Chinese auto conglomerate. So it's a little bit more complicated. They're basically trying to compete with Tesla, but also still keep their dealer model, have it both ways by splitting those brands up. It's an interesting strategy. On the high end of things, Lucid Motors has the Lucid Air, great car, nonetheless super expensive. I don't think it'll be relevant for that many buyers watching this video. However, should mention they are direct to consumer on their website. Rivian, also direct to consumer, I think more relevant for more people watching because they make cars, uh, or I should say trucks and SUVs, people care about. The question is their volume right now, it's nowhere near Tesla. So it seems like in terms of scale, Tesla really has monopolized this new take on the buying experience. And for that, I think I have to applaud them. Absolutely. Other manufacturers as well have, have said that they will start doing it. I know Ford and, and GM both have talked about uh, direct con to consumer sales, especially for EVs. But currently right now, you do have to go into a dealership. And at this moment right now, Tesla does have that advantage. Yep. The second thing we have to talk about is uh, just technology and as it applies to software and features. Because 
these Teslas, right, a lot of their definition is not just the car parts of it. It's actually the way they integrate technology, feature software, stuff like if you've seen uh, other out of spec channels, out of spec Dave, he just showcased dog mode the other day in his Model 3. You have that too. A lot of these features become standard. So you can, for instance, leave pets in the car, have the AC on because it's an electric car. It can run the high voltage system, so it's very little draw. Uh, and, you know, keep your pets comfy and cool and safe. Or it can use sentry mode, basically built in dash cams, cameras in the car and outside of it that you can live tune into on the app all of this uh, so far at least is free connectivity built in it's a super smart car and it seems like it gives you just a lot of really nice features absolutely there's a ton of stuff included like you mentioned the dog mode uh, there's camp mode as well which is similar but if you're going camping there's the sentry mode all the dash cams and all that and you're just making a turn here and it's like it has got the cool camera thing yes. the only other brands that do that i know are hyundai motor group and lucid but yeah. it's super nice you know nice really blind spot detection that way yeah i'm holding on to a heated steering wheel there's a lot of these small standard heated yeah, steering wheel all of this stuff is standard i didn't have to option it didn't have to pay for a package or go into you know that trim level to get this piece so that was one thing that i really loved i got pretty much everything that i wanted and needed and it's all there i didn't have to jump up to the next trim level Yep. And when it comes to these technology software features, I'll just speak from my experience with the Polestar. I do think certain automakers leveraging Google and Android Automotive are catching up with Tesla in key ways. In my car now, I can use a web browser. Software is really cool. Theoretically, it's over there, updatable. They do actually seem to be doing a decent job of rolling out regular updates. Um, so those are interesting. I don't know if they're quite as optimized as Tesla because from a back-end perspective, every day of a Tesla engineer's life seems to be, what parts can I remove of this car? What can I optimize? How can I consolidate more modules? And for us non-nerds, for us buyers, what that means is a car that is frankly just getting better over time, that is simple for Tesla to service, and that is really scalable, and that's admirable. They've really optimized it. And I think um, GM, I know, is going to use Android Automotive. I think Honda is starting to use it. Ford will use it. So these Google systems will leverage uh, a smart voice assistant, apps, features, platforms, ways. You know, a lot, a lot of drivers love to use that for maps. I think these cars are going to improve a lot in those areas, but I don't quite think any of them have caught up in terms of just all the lovely user-facing features Tesla's have. There's a lot of junk, too. Like, I don't like that your car, Ryan, I don't know how big of an issue this is for you, but I love the option of CarPlay, and it bums me out that GM's going to remove it. I don't like that Tesla's never had it. I get their argument that they prefer to integrate it, but I would like CarPlay in here. I think it'd be nice. Yeah, I think it would be really great to have the option. Being uh, totally frank, I think this system is good enough that I, I don't always feel like I wish I had it, but it would be way better to have that option at the very least. Mm -hmm. I think you're bringing up a good point. A lot of manufacturers do have really, really great systems, and they're pretty close to... Uh, as smooth, as integrated, just everything working to together nicely. Yep. It's just not quite a hundred percent there. I think Tesla do, does still have just the slightest advantage in, in that sense and just integrating everything, yes. everything seamless. The slightest advantage over some manufacturers, like with my Polestar, I theoretically have a remote key app. It works. I can unlock, lock the car, start conditioning. It's not quite as advanced or, in my experience, as reliable as Tesla's system, but it's close. And hey, it's free with the car, comes with the connectivity, great. Other brands, legacy automakers, let's just say Hyundai, Chevy, tend to charge you a subscription to use, in my opinion, those very basic features, something I don't love. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. There are some subscription features with Tesla. Uh, you can get like the premium subscription, and there are a few things. The main advantage is you get live traffic updates. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's something, but... Yeah. I think subscription models are something we're seeing across a lot of different Yeah, I, I can see the comments. I'm never going to buy a car with subscription, blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry to face it to you, but the financials are such that every tech and car company is going to want subscription revenue. And right now, I feel much more comfortable with Tesla offering good-for-the-money subscription services than I do with car companies that, let's be frank, do a terrible job making software. Uh, Tesla being a Silicon Valley, you know, California-based company, it shows in the technology and features of the car. They still seem to, in my opinion, be clearly ahead in that department. Yes. Worth, worth also, also mentioning, with Tesla and other vehicles, you can own them without paying the subscription services. Mm -hmm. It's totally up to It you. seems like they give you like all the basics we've been talking about just for free. That's awesome. Now, that could change. I, I haven't looked too closely at terms and conditions. Who knows? Maybe in four to five years, Tesla will need to increase its profit margins, and this will start to kick in. Our advice applies as of the middle of 2023. That's right. 
And that applies to any car. I mean, if these cars are computers now, they could change with updates, we never know. But I have been impressed, I will tell you, Ryan, with um, Lucid and Rivian, how much their cars have improved with software. So it does seem like the newer, younger upstart brands are really getting with it and kind of adopting the Tesla model. So I don't think Tesla will be alone in being an undisputed software leader, but right now they are. <laughs> Absolutely, you're bringing yeah. up a great point with uh, those updates, those over-to-the-air updates. They're great with Tesla. We're seeing them with Rivian and Lucid as well. Mm -hmm. We're seeing some problems with other legacy manufacturers. I know uh, Hyundai Kia are having some problems with their over-the-air stuff. Yep. Volkswagen had some problems as well. Yep. It's not always as good with le legacy manufacturers when it comes to those over-the-air updates. Yep. And then we have to talk about well, if we are talking about Tesla, we've talked a little bit about batteries, efficiency, technology. Let's talk about charging, because charging is an area where Tesla just, I think, right now obliterates everyone. And it's why many people on how to spec reviews and many other YouTube channels will comment, just buy a Tesla and don't buy anything else. I will say I don't agree with that advice. I think it's kind of simplistic. It is lacking nuance. And frankly, if you're rooting for a monopoly a, a market in this economy, then I question your values. But uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, you got to give it to Tesla. They really have invested in charging and it shows. The supercharger experience, the NACS, if we want to call it that, the North American Charging Standard, connector that you use to plug in your car regardless of whether it's a fast dc charger or an ac evsc i mean it's just such a nice way to plug into your car the car is so seamless and smooth what do you think about tesla charging ryan i love it i mean one thing i would like to mention that people do bring up is the actual charging the physical handle is it's small it's light it's easy to use uh, it's it's a little bit more difficult to use a CCS handle. They're a bit bulkier. The cables can. You're being nice. It's a little. It's a lot more difficult. <laughs> yeah. So so that is that is an advantage. I yeah. Definitely. See, additionally, Tesla superchargers are just head and shoulders above the rest. There's more stalls. They're faster. They're reliable. It's it's clear that they are much better than the competition and the momentum seems to be still in their favor like if i were other charging companies the other charge point operators ev go electrify america charge point i think at this point they all get the message they all understand they need to improve charging their rollouts are still slow yes. tesla is like building hundreds of superchargers huge massive sites and installations and this is a level of ambition i wish other companies would step up to yeah i think i think overall all of our charging infrastructure is improving. It seems like Tesla is really taking things by the reins and doing as much as they can to improve it as much as possible. Yep. I don't get the same feeling with all the other uh, operators. It feels like everyone else right now is catching up to where Tesla currently is at. And Tesla is thinking about the next 10 years of EVs where everyone has one. And so yet again, this is an area where I would argue Tesla's not just like a generation ahead. They're like arguably a decade ahead in charging because I think CCS charging for non-Tesla cars will get better. It will get quote unquote fixed, right? We're gonna have more of them, lower level, level two chargers, um, like the charge point units we see in many places or dumber like Clipper Creek units, you know, cheaper chargers you might see at hotels. All of these things we're gonna see rolled out. They're gonna be, I think, improved. But that's all just to me the status quo Tesla is already at. If you're an EV driver and you don't wanna think about charging, really Tesla is the best brand to recommend right now. Yeah. Furthermore, to make things swing even more in Tesla's favor is there's now the CCS to Tesla adapter. <laughs> yeah. Meaning you can use all of the same CCS chargers if you so want to mm -hmm. on your Tesla. So now you have access to everything that CCS vehicles have. Yep. Plus the supercharger network. So it's pretty clear that there is a massive advantage. If you're going to be doing a ton of road trips, if you don't have uh, a super reliable charging situation, I think Tesla is probably going to be a much more uh, reliable option. I'm you. glad you mentioned that, Ryan, because there are parts of the country, let's face it, like where we are in Western Colorado, where actually CCS infrastructure in terms of deployment is actually pretty great and in some ways beats Tesla superchargers. Nonetheless, like you said, you get a $200 adapter and as a Tesla, you can use all those same chargers too. So it's not like you're missing out. Uh, well, while CCS gets better. So really objectively, any way you slice it, Tesla is winning when it comes to charging the car for both road trips and just general, I think, forward thinking this. They are ahead in that area. Lastly, let's talk about a nerdy topic that really does affect everyday driving of the car. That is the battery, the motors, the efficiency. Broadly, I just wanna sum this up as basically the way they build the car, the technology Tesla has, I would argue, 
they are like a generation ahead of everyone else in terms of efficiency. Um, if you want to get nerdy, Ryan, do you know like the kind of numbers you're getting in this car? Yeah, it's it's truly, truly impressive. I came from a Bolt, which itself is a pretty efficient EV. This is way more efficient in every single way. In cold weather, it's probably uses half the amount of uh, energy, if not less. Uh, under great conditions, I'm seeing four and a half, five and a half miles per kilowatt hour driving around Boulder doing some light highway stuff. Going into Denver sometimes, it's it's truly, truly impressive in every sense. Yep, and efficiency matters for an electric car because, well, yes, while electric cars are generally greener and better, uh, more efficient than their combustion counterparts, they're not all equal. And by your car being more efficient, Ryan, you're getting more real-world driving range, you're paying less because you, even though electricity isn't super expensive, it still costs something, you are paying less in the long run. These, are, I think, are super interesting decisions. I mean, if you are a nerdy engineering type and you look at the way Tesla designs cars, they are constantly making things lighter. They are looking at ways to like make better heat pumps, better climate systems, better motor controllers, better everything. I mean, they are just, and it's not to say other car makers aren't thinking of other ways to do this. You could argue when it comes to performance and efficiency, uh, Lucid might be ahead of Tesla in certain departments. However, they're not shipping nearly as many cars. And BMW, I know in particular, says they have really exciting upcoming motor technology. I think Rivian's developing their own in-house motors, which should help them hopefully produce cheaper vehicles. But right now, when it comes to all of these components and vertical integration, Tesla just can manufacture a car that's more efficient and cheaper than the competition, and they make more profit. They just are winning hugely. And I think every it's not a message that's lost to legacy automakers. I mean, Ford, GM, everyone else gets this. That's why we're hearing a lot about Ultium, which will be the platform that powers future GM cars, like the Silverado truck, uh, currently the Cadillac Lyric, all of these vehicles. I mean, the other automakers realize this, but I would still argue it's gonna take them a few years at least to catch up. I don't think it's insurmountable. I mean, like uh, Legacy Auto, you know, they're pretty good at making moving parts and parts that, so I, th I think they will catch up to Tesla, but right now Tesla has just taken the reins because they've bled the industry in electric vehicles. They also enjoy really good motors, really good batteries that consumers realize the benefits of in terms of just a more efficient, higher range car. Absolutely, I 100% agree. There's so much really exciting stuff coming up from all these manufacturers, legacy, startups, all this stuff that will help uh, bring things uh, more to a level playing field. And I, I don't want to sound like a Tesla fanboy, but I think the reality is at this point in the middle of 2023, Tesla does have real significant advantages over a lot of other manufacturers, and it's worth acknowledging them and discussing them. Yep, and we're just trying to be practical in this video. If you don't want to buy a Tesla, I totally get it. I respect it. I didn't want to buy a Tesla. Not, I mean, you can feel however you want about Elon Musk. I'm not going to get a bunch of replies on my Twitter by saying my thoughts on all that. But I will just say that I just wanted a Polestar because it was different, you know? You see a lot of Teslas nowadays, and I just wanted something different. I would argue that this car, the Tesla Model 3 and its sibling, the Tesla Model Y, they're like the Honda Civic or the Volkswagen Golf of the 21st century. I mean, we're going to see them everywhere. And kudos to Tesla, they deserve it because they are producing incredible economy cars with real legitimate advantages. We're not saying this, neither of us are Tesla fanboys. We just are recognizing the market as it is, trying to give useful buying advice. And also I think hopefully setting a benchmark because by watching this video, we want you to expect these kinds of features and performance out of every car over the next few years. Absolutely, I'm hoping to see a lot more competition, to see stuff uh, and eventually maybe see a day where Tesla's not leading in in all these categories. That'd be really cool to see. Yeah, right now they have a comfortable lead in all these areas we've mentioned, but that could change in the next few years. So hopefully this gives you a good overview of the market, maybe arms you with some buying knowledge. And um, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Any other points you'd like to bring up, Ryan? No, I think that really covered it. I'd be happy to hear what everyone else uh, has to think about this. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Awesome, see you in the next video.